DCX, DCX boost. What you're hearing right now and what you've heard in almost every this section of one of my videos for the last two years or so is my voice through the Universal Audio 610B Mic Pre. Uh, this tube-driven mic preamplifier uh, is actually the software recreation by Universal Audio based on their original 610 tube pre. Uh, and it has been a staple of my workflow since I started recording in the UA environment. For my production workflow, the 610 Pre has been the kind of mic pre that gives you the ability to either lean super hard into absolute transparency of EQ or fine tuning your lows and your highs in really striking and well balanced ways. Which brings us, of course, today to the DCX Boost Tone Shaper and Drive by Origin Effects. This is an appropriately meticulous recreation of a 610 adapted for a guitar pedal board. And I had high expectations when I knew that this was coming into the studio. Like I said, the 610 is something that I incorporate into my workflow basically daily here in the studio. And to be able to take that and stick it on the pedal board uh, was something that I was really curious to engage with and very, very curious to try. I was especially curious to hear how it would operate as an overdrive because I don't use a 610 for clipping. I use it for kind of soft saturation, volume, and some kind of like EQ sparkle and low frequency control. But here we are with Origin's take on it, featuring their adaptive circuitry, which I love, as well as the flattest and most transparent responsiveness I've ever heard in an EQ pedal. And I'm not being facetious there. I, I, fir I firmly believe that this is true. To explain what I mean with that, on the DCX, you have a mode switch that switches between EQ and overdrive. In EQ mode, that drive control is gonna be incredibly low gain, not really getting into kind of like internalized clipping in any meaningful way until the very, very top kind of like spin on that drive control. In overdrive mode, you get a lot more clipping a lot earlier and can almost kind of like edge into fuzz territory. But below it, you have low frequency and high frequency controls where at noon, they're dead flat. And then you can cut or you can boost and a voice control that in EQ mode offers adaptive circuitry that does responsive high-end filtering based on your playing dynamics or the overdrive mode which removes that in favor of static high filtering via that voice control as flat a medium amount of treble taken away or a lot of treble taken away in the dark mode but getting back to that intense transparency place if you max your level out minimize your drive stay in eq mode go with a flat voice and put both eq controls at noon you can engage this pedal and hear literally no difference and you may be asking why you would want that and for me it shows a starting place it shows kind of knowing that you can go from absolute zero with the pedal engaged to anywhere you need to go with a pedal like this um, you have access to from there those low frequency and high frequency boost and cut controls that are phenomenally well-tuned and I mean we're t we'll get into it in the sound samples but like you can zero out or maximize both of those sounds both of those frequency ranges and it never sounds comical it never sounds that way that like a bad EQ curve sounds where it feels printed over top of your signal in a way that doesn't feel organic or kind of like in keeping with your like natural guitars tonality. Like I said, I use the 610 a lot. I had high expectations for what the DCX was going to need to be able to do. And I gotta say, one, it's a damn good overdrive. You kick into overdrive mode and give it a little bit of that high frequency boost and you get something with a lot of teeth, a lot of attitude, a lot of grit. Uh, you heard on that intro track, there is some great jangle. There is some great treble boosty quality in here, but the DQ mode is the truth for me. It allows me to take something like that Josh Williams Stella I was playing on that intro that has a very gentle, a uh, warm, almost jazzy style neck pickup in the form of that uh, Porter P90 and lean into that and darken it up and jazz it up even more in ways that don't sound wooly or go the exact opposite direction and give that very mellow sounding neck pickup character and attitude and punchiness and and give it the opportunity to kind of sparkle in a mix in a way that that guitar never does in that position. The voice control, especially in EQ mode, that adaptive circuitry allows you to double down on those things in dynamic ways where it will increase and decrease the amount of treble filtering 
based on your playing dynamics. In the overdrive mode, I find that to be less so the case. That adaptive circuitry goes away and I have a harder time finding really like high value uses for like the dark setting in the overdrive mode, but I consider that to be not a huge loss in my opinion, because like I said, that voice control on that EQ side is really where I find so much of my value. And anecdotally, uh, at time of recording this, uh, I was playing a live gig maybe 25 hours ago with my Benson Vinny, which if you've ever played that amplifier, is a one knob amp where at lower settings it is cleaner and brighter and higher settings is darker and gainier. Based on the size of the venue I was in and the way I had my rig set up, I had it running pretty, pretty low, very, very clean, which means a lot brighter, brighter than I was hoping for in the context and for the guitar I had brought to the gig with me. Fortunately, I had thrown this pedal in my gig bag just in case. And so I swapped out my last uh, gain stage for this, threw it in that EQ mode, turned on that adaptive control voice, as well as gave it a little bit of a high cut. And I didn't lose any sparkle, any sense of presence in my amplifier. I didn't feel like I put a wool blanket over my tone. But what this did do was tame down harshness, was filter out anything that was gonna sound peaky and bad in my amp rig. And this thing was a life saver for that set. And that drive control up at noon in that EQ mode offered an added layer of harmonic information, saturation, and just kind of like evened out my guitar's response really effectively. I was playing a pretty low gain guitar too. So that added bit of clean saturation really did give me a sense of structure to my guitar tone. So yeah, that's a rundown on the features, what I love about it, as well as an anecdote on how this thing saved my ass at a gig very, very recently. So uh, let's not keep talking about it. Let's not keep dwelling on it. Let's go to our sound samples. Let's take a look at our pedal board and let's really dig into what makes the DCX boost. Um, maybe my favorite EQ pedal I've gotten in the last two years. Yeah, let's give it a listen. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we're working in. I am playing my Josh Williams Stella with a Lawler Imperial low wind in the bridge and a Porter P90 in the neck. Uh, our signal chain is going to be the Bondi FX Squish As, the Benson Germanium Boost, and the Origin FX MEQ Driver and DCX Boost. From there, we go to the Quiet 3 Prelude, the Strymon LCAP and the New Neighbor Illumin, both in stereo, and out to our amplifiers, which are the Universal Audio Ruby and Dream in a stereo pair, mixed in parallel via the GFI Duophony. Dry guitar into a, just a little bit of reverb, and the uh, amplifiers sounds like this. <laughs> We picked this guitar uh, for this section of the video largely because, as you can hear, that bridge pickup has got a lot of like bite and teeth and kind of treble response to it. Whereas that neck is really warm and gentle sounding. And I want to highlight kind of the tonal differences and the kind of the ways that you can use the DCX in this EQ mode to really get the most out of your pickups because uh, I love that neck pickup as a clean sound, but it can get a little muddy or a little lost in a mix very easily because of how kind of jazzy and, and kind of mellow it sounds. And this can either create a version of that that really leans into what makes that so kind of like comforting and mellow to listen to, or it can really do a lot to kind of bring sparkle and character into that pickup without adding a bunch of kind of bite or aggression that you don't actually want in that kind of a neck pickup position. But having said all that, we're gonna start things off in EQ mode uh, with this thing set basically as flat and as clean as it possibly can be. And just to highlight just how flat the response rate can be. We're in EQ mode, we have our level at max and our drive at minimum. Low frequency and high frequency are both at noon and we have a flat response rate on the voice control.
Yeah, it's that straightforward. It's that accurate to your actual signal. As you increase that drive on this clean side, you increase kind of like harmonic buildup. It's a trip too, because if you listen to kind of noon and noon, you can pretty much count these as mirror images of each other in this EQ mode to keep kind of unity gain if that's what you're shooting for, which in this context I am. But even here with that like little bit of drive added in, the response rate is still incredibly flat. It's just that harmonic buildup. You do get some drive when you really crank this thing, but it's amazing how much of that sweep just builds up. Like I said, that really kind of... It's incredibly subtle on that on the EQ side as far as like how far you have to go to really get kind of self-contained breakup as opposed to just kind of grander harmonic content. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the side of this thing that I think makes the DCX boost so incredibly compelling in this EQ mode, which is going to be this section down here, your incredibly robust EQ system. So let's start off with our low frequency and high frequency controls, and then we'll take a look at that voice switch uh, from flat to medium and then to dark in terms of the amount of treble filtering happening uh, with that adaptive control in EQ mode. Let's start things off with that low frequency control.
you might be noticing right off the bat here, it takes all the way down to like a minimum setting to really start to feel lopsided in that way that an EQ can. And you'll notice this as we kind of go the other direction with both these controls as well, which is these are incredibly well tuned for uh, for your guitar. Like they they don't do the excessive buildup or the excessive cut that makes things sound kind of janky. There's not a lot of dead spots in the pedal in my opinion. Let's jump over to that neck pickup as we cut to kind of show how you can kind of reintroduce some clarity. What's really a trip is you can boost this too without really getting super janky, even with mellow pickups like this. Like the, obviously the bridge pickup is gonna benefit from chunky or low frequencies. But for that neck pickup to, to sound as good as it's about to is pretty impressive, especially when you generally stay away from boosting low frequencies on a neck pickup on, a, on, a, on an overdrive. <laughs> Again, you pretty much have to max it out to get something resembling woolly and that's in that context. Yeah, it's awesome. Let's take that back to noon and give this high frequency control a listen. And you'll notice some of those same things, especially with that adaptive control as we get into the different voice switches. Uh, but you're going to notice that you don't get ice picky nonsense as you boost that treble you get like sparkle and grit and edge but nothing harsh and nothing really like abrasive or offensive and there are a there there is a place for abrasive aggressive kind of trebly overdrives in the world and i know a lot of great companies can make them but having something like this that's just so refined the whole way through is a big win in my opinion <laughs>
I find, just to get ahead of ourselves a little bit, that a tiny bit of uh, low cut and a little bit of treble boost in conjunction with one another makes for something really chimey and toothy in a cool way. trip that treble completely maxed out like that can sound this good. Again, dial that back just a hair, cut a little bit of lows, I mean, maybe for good measure, just like throw your compressor in front of it, and then you can take something like this, and turn it into give it a little bit more a little bit more grit a little bit of low end back in Again, without that, but suddenly that that very mellow sounding pickup's got a lot of life to it. You can also lean super hard into that kind of the mellow side of that neck pickup control. Like you can boost those lows, cut those highs. Like I said, we're dealing with a pickup that I already really like as a, as kind of something that can be mellow or brightened up. But this is the kind of EQ scheme that will actually let you get more of this out of it if that's what you want. more harmonic information. A little bit of delay, just for fun. Let's use this opportunity to kind of take a step into that voice control using these same kind of like already pretty mellow sounding EQ scheme right here. Lows being pushed forward, highs being tucked back. Let's go to that medium position. So let's go, let's go knobs at noon again, just so you can hear the difference right on the face. But we've got our flat response right now. To medium.
But what you're going to notice about that is going from flat to medium. You notice we lose a little bit of trouble there, just, just a hair. But you can take that drive further up and you'll notice that we're losing even more of it. But if we play softer, you start to, you get, you get a slight bit of additional filtering as you kind of overdrive the pedal. And that's that adaptive circuitry we were talking about. And then in the dark mode. You can compensate back up a little bit with those high frequencies. You still got some good treble in there, but when you dig in, Let's lean in super hard to that kind of reactive, mellow sound. Like I said, there can be a challenge in getting properly mellow guitar sound um, that doesn't sound like you've got an, over, an overdose of EQ being applied to kind of fake mellow something out. Uh, often you grab for like, you know, a jazz top, like, an or like a jazz guitar, like an arch top or some sort of like old school vintage guitar with like a mostly microphonic gold foil pickup at this point uh, to get those cool gentle mellow sounds that are so elusive in modern music production and uh, I think that the kind of combination of adaptive circuitry and the really rock solid faithful recreation of a 610 preamp actually creates something that gives you a ton of uh, versatility between those really mellow gentle dark sounds and those snappy bright articulate sparkly guitar parts. Okay, so we've reset all of our so we've reset our EQ controls down at the bottom to flat, flat, and flat. We're back to that kind of like hyper faithful recreation. Let's jump over to overdrive mode. Let's run through our kind of min-max of our drive range, and uh, and then we'll kind of take a quick pass through the no longer adaptive, now static EQ control that is the voice control. Uh, it's going to be a set amount of treble roll-off across the three modes, and then the low and high frequencies to kind of give you a little bit of a sense of kind of like how far you can push the drive control, especially if you kind of crank your low and high frequencies as well to get some extra craziness out of it. <laughs>
Like I mentioned, that neck pickup can get a little bit flabby and wooly when you're not careful with gain. But again, that calls into high. You have to forgive the noise on this pickup. So yeah, as you can hear, there's a really, really wide gain range on the drive control on this thing. Let's get to a place where we're sitting kind of nice and nice and crispy. Really quick, just for fun, let's hit the germanium boost in front of it to hear how it kind of like takes varying levels of input gain. It just kind of like hits like a better point of saturation really well. And then with the boost. Okay, let's give these low controls, uh, these EQ controls, a listen with the overdrive mode. We're not gonna run through all of it again, we're just gonna do some kind of like knob turning to show how you can get from a nice flat response overdrive like this. To something with some teeth. <laughs> 